across the lake are another group of dinosaurs. These are called Edmontosauruses, but they're also called Anatotitans, which means giant duck, because their mouths look like a duck's bill. When the Anatotitans were first discovered, paleontologists thought that their mouths could open as long and as wide as a duck or a crocodile. But then recent observations say that their mouths were somewhat like that of horses. The orifice is only at the front of their mouths, and their teeth are hidden behind the skin and cheeks. God gave the Anatotitan the most number of teeth of any dinosaur, because he filled their mouths with hundreds of tightly packed teeth for crushing tough plants. The teeth are in vertical rows, and are found on both the upper and lower jaws. The front of the Anatotitans' mouths would be used to grab large mouthfuls of food, while the 1,600 teeth would chew up the food and then swallowing it. With this gifted mouthful of more than a thousand teeth, the Anatotitans can eat almost any kind of vegetation, from the soft grass to thick and hard conifers. Despite their size, the Anatotitans are considered to be prey animals to some predatory dinosaurs. They don't have any spikes or armor, but they can escape into the water in times of danger, for God gave them web-like feet to help them swim. The Anatotitans can also stand up to reach food in a tree and to run for a short distance. God made their eye sockets large to give the Anatotitans a wide field of vision. Another unique feature of the Anatotitan is the large, hollow nose opening. God made them like that because he made the nasal sac which functions like when a frog ribbits. Anatotitans would inflate these nasal sacs to communicate or alert of danger. In the distance comes danger. This is Ecrixanatosaurus. He's a large member of the theropods, and he's also a giant cousin of Rugovs and Carnotaurus. Very little is known about his species. Even though he's not an apex predator, for he grows no bigger than T. rex, he's capable of preying on some sauropod species. And so the Anatotitans are a regular choice in his diet. He was gifted with powerful jaws which were lined with 3 inch long teeth. His skin color almost matches the color of the grass, making it difficult for the Anatotitans to spot him. The Ecrixanatosaurus can hide his appearance, but he can't hide his scent. The wind is blowing from behind him, which carries his scent toward the herd. One of the Anatotitans acts as a sentry to keep an eye out for danger. She picks up the Ecrixanatosaurus' scent. She starts to get wary, and she causes the rest of the herd to be wary too. It's now or never. The Anato Titans retreat into the lake. The Eclipse Anatosaurus' attack was too late. The whole Anatotitan herd are now safe. The Ecrixanatosaurus can't go after them in the water, because God didn't make him a good swimmer because his arms are short and are probably useless except for balancing. God made lots of species of Hadrosaurids, and he decorates almost each species with a unique head crest on their heads. Corythosaurus was named for his plate-like crest that almost looked like a Corinthian helmet from ancient Greece. God made the Corythosaurus' crest hollow so he and his kind can make sounds. Some scientists think that the Corythosaurus would make a booming foghorn-like sound when they communicate to each other or to warn about danger. This is probably why Corythosaurus would stay together in groups or herds where any individual member could spot danger. Being together in a herd is one of the biggest chances for an animal species to survive. As you can see today how many group animals are still existing today since the day of creation. God also made the Corythosaurus' crest light and the Corythosaurus can also use them to attract mates and to identify each other. Just like how the Stegosaurids can identify their own kind by the looks of their spikes and plates. And how we can identify each other by our own looks. Corythosaurus are able to eat leaves, seeds, pine needles, fruits, aquatic plants, and grass. 
They would grip at the plant food with their hard beak at the front of the mouth, and then chew at the plant food with their teeth at the back of the mouth, and then swallowing it. Like all other hadrosaurids, God made cheeks on the Corythosaurus' mouth to prevent the food from falling out as they're being chewed. Of course, the correct pronunciation is Corythosaurus, but if your name is Cory, or if a relative of yours is named Cory, wouldn't it be fun to call him Corythosaurus? Parasaurolophus is one of the most famous members of the Hadrosaurids. He has a long backward pointing crest that is hollow on the inside, suggesting that God made this crest as a communication device to signal danger, distress, mating, and or identifying one another. Scientists have observed the Parasaurolophus' skull and might have been able to reconstruct what they might have sounded like. They might have sounded like this. <sighs> producing a call that was much louder than a wolf's or even the Siamang ape. With this crest designed to be around 2 meters long, Parasaurolophus can make very loud and deep sounds that can echo over the landscape. Some people have also suggested that God put a large sensory area in the crest to help the Parasaurolophus smell for food from far away. It was also used later to detect for predators. Some people have also suggested that Parasaurolophus had a frill made of skin that connected to the crest and neck. There is some evidence that Parasaurolophus was gifted with webbed feet to help him swim. Parasaurolophus has teeth but no front teeth. Instead, God made a flat toothless beak to help them pick and eat plant food. Their beaks almost look like a duck's bill, which is a reason why this dinosaur group is called the Hadrosaurids. Like most of his animal creations, God gave the Parasaurolophus and his kind a wide choice of food to eat, such as leaves, conifer needles, branches, twigs, seeds, fruit, and other coarse plants. This is an Alloro Titan. What's unique about her species is their head crest because God made it look more like the frills of the Ceratopsians which are the horn-faced dinosaurs like Triceratops. Some people think that they're able to change the crest's colors for display, but some other people think that the crests are hollow to help produce the Alloro Titan's own kind of sound. Alloro Titans is one of the most complete hadrosaurs to be discovered in Asia. Because paleontologists were able to find most of their bones, unlike the other Asian hadrosaurids that they found. They are called giant swan because of their long necks, which was another unique detail that God made for the Aloro Titans. The Aloro Titans' baby hears a sound. It's a kill deer bird, but despite the name, they don't literally kill actual deer. Before sin had began, birds and other animals had no reason to defend themselves. But when sin entered the world, God gave most of his animal creations, including the killdeer bird, ideas on how to defend itself. The mother killdeer would lure an animal away from her nest by pretending that her wing is broken, and that the animal would go after her rather than the nest. Of course, the mother killdeer doesn't know that the baby Alora Titan isn't a predator at all, but the baby is only being curious. <laughs> Fortunately, though, the baby Aloro Titans' mom calls her back, and the killdeer bird and her nest are safe. Shantungosaurus is probably the largest member of the Hadrosaurids, for God made her kind so big that she's even larger than a T-Rex. She may be the largest Hadrosaurid, but she's also a gentle giant. A father and his children have come to feed the Shintungosaurus with pumpkins. God had given the Shintungosaurus some similar features, similar to what the Anato Titans have. For she was designed with a large nasal opening, instead of having any sort of head crest, to communicate with other Shintungosaurus. She might also have the second largest number of teeth in any dinosaur. God put over 1,500 teeth in her mouth to chew up her plant food and make it easy for digestion. Before the Great Flood began, all the animals weren't afraid of people as they are today. But after the Great Flood, written in Genesis chapter 9 verse 2, God said that all the animals, beasts, reptiles, birds, and fish alike, will always be afraid of man.
Most of the hadrosaurid species that we know are big, but God didn't make all of them big, for He has made small kinds also. Some of them would grow no bigger than modern day elephants, like Cicernosaurus, which is probably the smallest hadrosaurid that God has ever created. Very little is known about the Cicernosaurus other than that their name means severed lizard, their bones were found in Argentina in South America, and they grow as long as a West Indian manatee. The Cicernosaurus would stay in herds to be extra wary for predators. Fuquisaurus is another small kind of hadrosaurid. God made him be as big as a bison. He may almost look like a dinosaur called Iguanodon, but he's a member of the Hadrosaurus group and is not in the same kind of the group that the Iguanodon is in. The first fossils of the Fuquisaurus was found in the year 1989 on Honshu Island which is in Japan. 